Start the second part of this meeting, and this is the Eastern Area District Budget Workshop. If everyone's ready, can I have an approval of the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes, please. <laughs> I'm curious what line by line review is on here and the reason why I ask is because last week we discussed what the agenda for tonight would be and we said line by line review and line by line is section four of the budget binder it's entitled line by line I know that's what the description of what we were looking for was but we received a memo that states that tonight we'll be looking at the budgets for each of the district's 11 schools and then if time permits transportation and custodial maintenance and I see the building principals are here, so I'm assuming that that is not an error. So I'm just curious why what we discussed last week for the agenda for this evening and what we've been presented with this evening are two very different things. If I'm not mistaken, um, we okay. asked for discretionary right. Nine. funding and right. your other and request the was the board. Line by line. Line by That's line. That's what I yes. understood. That's what yes. my interpretation on, was. On the discretionary items, and the, fixed and the, items aren't going to help us. No. And, we, and the other part of that was? Uh, line by line on the board items at items. items right okay. I did go back and actually watch the meeting just to make sure because I knew when I was asked what I was looking for and I said line by line and that is the title yeah of that section and it highlighted that it is divided by 100 series it would be helpful if we had a further breakdown of it I know the building budgets are not divided that way and dr. volcano did elaborate upon discretionary spending which you know, I suppose to some extent principals' budgets are discretionary. I'm just concerned because that was the first part of what we were supposed to cover on the day of our budget meeting. And our business manager is leaving soon. And, you know, having her go over her portion of that seemed to make the most sense to me at that time. So I'm just a little bit surprised that there has been a change. If, if it was a misunderstanding, then so, but I just would like to make it, I was very surprised when I saw this and was unsure of what to prepare for for this evening based on it. I know an email was sent asking for clarification and did not receive one. Very Perhaps quick, that was unclear. Very quickly. Um, well, I didn't think it had changed from what we talked about a week ago. So when yeah. I left this meeting, I was under the impression that it were was the two items budgets, that we were going right, to talk so about. We were going to call and, the And also, and it's impossible to cover this in one day. You could oh, not cover this days, tonight. Dr. We got other we got other yes. days we're going to come yes, up Dr. with. So Volcano, this taking, is the plan for the first take, morning. Taking a couple things out of here would be natural. Any other discussion? If not, Ms. Gidney, would you proceed with? Oh, excuse, I thought. Oh, I'm sorry. We had discussion on the public comment on the uh, agenda items only. We did approve it. We didn't vote on the hearing. You just had discussion about it. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm no, going around the sink. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. So now, let's have public comment on the re agenda items only. Please step up to the microphone. If there's not, budget over here. Um, well, let me see here advanced more rapidly than I thought, but I will show you this graph first. This graph represents the costs that are within this budget for 2011-2012. Salaries and benefits, uh, maybe you want to cut this light over here. Oh, is this uh, all right? Is that okay? Yeah. Could you let me know. Board members, you can you see if you need to make a note? Uh, these, the very largest amount there, that 69.27% is what is in the budget for salaries and benefits. It includes salaries for every person who is a employee of the district mm -hmm. and also the individual totals for benefits, Social Security, Medicare taxes, it includes retirement, it includes life insurance, dental insurance, medical insurance, unemployment, and also workers' comp insurance. If you look to the left there, that blue section that is at 12.05%, that's the debt service in excess of $17 million here within the district. That's to pay for the money that was borrowed for building projects within the district. 
The utilities and diesel there includes gas, water, fuel oil, and that is at 2.36%. Contracted services I threw in there, and that's that a lime green color there, right next below the debt service at 1.54. And that is what we call the 300 series here within the PDE accounting manual. You see insurance there at about a third of a percent. Charter schools at 1.13, and that's at 1,600,000. Now I have a comment about charter schools. Charter schools are not brick and mortar schools like we have schools, but in most cases are cyber schools. We are required to calculate what our expenditures are for regular ed students and special ed students and submit that money to those cyber schools or those charter schools who have our students in those schools. They do not have to build schools and they do not have a teacher who's in front of students other than being at a, a charter or a cyber facility. So they can use the money that we use, the same dollar amount, and in some cases have very large fund balances, and uh, we must pay that, or that money that we are pay for those students is deducted from our subsidy from the state. So that $1.6 million is what is estimated to pay to uh, those charter schools for next year. Now the state does reimburse about 30% of that dollar amount, but 30% is not a large dollar amount when you're expending about 1.6 million. Then you see the IU 20 there, that 4.81% includes what their special ed costs are estimated to be for next year, in excess of 6.8 million. Then there's Northampton Community College at 0.76%. CIT at 1.4%, the library at 1.06%, athletics there at 0.72%, and that is the gross expenditures. The revenues for that about uh, $200,000 is, is in <coughs> revenue. Senior citizen rebates at a quarter of a percent is at $350,000 for next year. And that program needs to be out there even more because we about two weeks ago, Debbie had a man who came in here who did not pay his taxes because uh, he submitted his check and it was late. He was not aware of senior citizen rebates for district residents. He was also not aware of the Homestead Farmstead exclusion. Those two dollar amounts there would equal you know, about $600 for him to be have coming back on his taxes. And in addition to that, the state provides money for seniors who own their home and have very little income. So those things need to be out there. If you know somebody who uh, does not take advantage of those programs, they really need to. And then their budgetary reserve is at 0.28% at, and that dollar amount is at 400,000, down from a million dollars last year. And then other, that's the discretionary money, 4.03%. After you take all those other things out. Uh, a little bit over five, I believe. If I can go through this, I'll come back to that because I already skipped over my graph over my chart. Here's your Board of Education budget. And uh, it shows the 0910 actual expenses at $164,321. And then the budget, uh, 2010-11, the budget was $129,050, and your total so far from just the other day this week, early this week, was $112,334. And next year's budget uh, for 11-12 is uh, estimated to be $283,800. Now I have some explanation for that. In looking at the line that is down at the 529 at 80,000, it's the one, two, three, fourth number down all the way to the right, $80,000 insurance other. That money is in there to pay insurance premiums in case there's an a, a increase in insurance premiums and it's an additional dollar amount. Arizona emissions insurance, that's to protect the district over anything that might go wrong in something that is omitted or is uh, an error on behalf of the district. It's insurance that we pay. 
81 6 is in there for budget and we're supposed to have those dollar amounts finalized uh, probably in late April or early May if you come all the way down to the bottom there's a 30,000 a 30,000 and a 12 coming up from the bottom all the way to the right the dollar amount there in claims that's monies that the district pays out in settlement costs for lawsuits or for comp ed or uh, settlements for particular times of uh, lawsuits the district has 10 outstanding lawsuits at this point and looking at those dollar amounts 72,000 uh, we had an estimate from an attorney who said to us you probably need to have three times that much money in there so that extra sixty thousand dollars is there if the district needs it certainly if the district does not need it it will go back into the budget or in into the fund balance for next year dues and fees out there are coming up there there's eight thousand dollars in that that is the psba dues and uh, currently you're at thirteen thousand two hundred fifty dollars there's only eight thousand dollars in that for next year um, magazines 114 at five hundred dollars non-consumables at five hundred dollars consumables and these are books that would be consumed and that might be something that would be used for other items and that's five hundred dollars uh, I'm sorry consumables at four hundred dollars and books at six hundred dollars Coming up, general supplies, 10,500. If you look at back at 09-10, was at $10,458. So far this year, you spent $3,329. But uh, we did not know when we developed this budget back in November what those dollar amounts would be. And certainly, in total is the number we're looking at. And during the year after October, three months after the budget is approved, after the 1st of October, transfers can be made between accounts within functions. And if you look all the way to the left, I'm going to give you a, a little lesson here, because you're interested, right? Mm -hmm. uh, account number, see that? The 10 is the fund, general fund. The 2310 or 2320 in this case is board operations. Then 41 is the building, identified by building, and then the zeros all the way to the end and then the either the zero zero one or the zero 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 identifies as the board's accounts and then those numbers that are the three digit numbers that have a separate column are identified by Pennsylvania Department of Ed as to what they describe 320 is contracted services of the 400s are generally purchase property services and in this case you see the copy releases there and then the 500 is insurance communications, telephone, postage, advertising, printing and binding, and travel. And PDE requires us that we use those numbers, and we use them across the district uh, to identify what they are. In the 600s, general supplies are always 610. 615, in-house meeting costs. 640, board and books, and you see books are identified there as books, consumables, and non-consumable books. <coughs> and uh, magazines in my okay uh, and in seven the 700s is equipment 750s identifies new equipment 760 identifies replacement equipment and then under the 800s is the dues and fees the claims miscellaneous miscellaneous and then you have the board secretary who's in there and the board treasurer and supplies or bonds and the uh, and that is the way the account numbers are identified across the district. So uh, I know the board needs has has some discussion. Wants to discuss this? Marie. Yes. Thirty thousand dollars. Yes. Um, I'm a little perplexed. We have ten ten lawsuits. Am I correct? Yes, I think that we identified ten today. Now we are insured in. to a certain point. Is this where, where does the 30000 come into? Is this after? This is actually the amount that would be paid to someone who sued the district, the plaintiff. This is not uh, attorney's costs, but this is actually settlement money or claims. And in some cases, it could be a comp ed for someone who feels that their child did not receive a proper education and 
and goes to due process or whatever. And, uh, and we're required to provide to provide a education for that child or provide a computer or provide a tutor or whatever and that would be how those costs would be determined. Or if we had a lawsuit that was settled on behalf of the plaintiff and then they came back and said that we needed to pay that person a certain dollar amount not covered by insurance for whatever reason that's where that money would come from but that does not include any special ed it does include special ed comp ed yes wow. uh, Marie, uh, you finish? Go ahead. Uh, when you go over to the dues why is there such a reduction in the dues we did not at that point where are we at? We're at the eight thousand. Eight ten. And uh, I did not put. I put the eight thousand dollars in there, not knowing what it was going to be uh, for uh, the year. And I certainly can move money around. In total, I would say that that budget needs to stay where it is. But well, if I even go back to the uh, two ten two eleven, mm -hmm. it says twenty two thousand, and then you only spent thirteen thousand. Is that so far this year? Yes. Right. And, now, and now if I go up to the copier lease on the 400, uh -huh. why is that up so high then from this year to next year? We have been looking at allocating the copier lease here with, among the floor. And uh, in some cases, the allocation has been, um, needs to be changed. So we have put that money in there. If you feel it needs to be less, we certainly can change that. But what, what, what was it last year and why is it different? That's what I think I'm asking. Uh, $779. And then $1,000 and then mm -hmm. $13. And then the budget was $1,000 and then the $1,359. And then, and then why does it go up so high? Is there more copiers? No, there is not more copiers. It's just the difference in the use of copiers. So we're using them more, is that what you're saying? Uh, Yes, we're seeing that departments are using them more than we had allocated in the past. No. But, you know, I can change the numbers on there. If you feel, if the board feels as though the numbers need to be changed, I can certainly do that. I don't think we know enough about that. Uh, well, I do have a question. Sure. I, which always bothers me, we pay this extra money to uh, uh, PBS a or whatever the Pennsylvania School Boards Association. I don't see their dues up there. The dues are under the 810 at eight thousand dollars. Dues and fees. And dues and fees are just uh, dues and fees at eight at the eight ten account. Well, I remember sitting on this board back in the early nineties, uh, not nineties, in the early two uh, thousands, and it was something like forty five thousand dollars back then. What brought well, that's the, the actual that's the actual in the invoice so far this year thirteen two fifty. Okay. So we must have did something to cause that, such as we were searching for a superintendent and well, that, that could have cost the that, brought that, the cost that up. would not be in that account. That would oh. be in the contract of service. Oh okay. and perhaps I need to move some of the copyright oh. money down to okay. that account and yes. Okay. okay. With regards to the copier lease, are we paying a flat amount across the district for that lease and it's just distributed over these various funds? No, it's identified by machine. It is identified yes, by machine. Is. Okay. So. And we actually have the business office uh, and the superintendent's office using that machine. So, But certainly in looking at that in this, after November, preparing this in November, part of that $9,800 certainly could be moved down there to dues and fees. At either at this time or in October after the three months has elapsed as when you prepare your budget when you approve your budget I think the hard thing here for me to understand is and I, and I appreciate that um, for instance we have uh, larger claims totals in our budget but what bothers me is that we've had ongoing claims this is not the first year and that no money is budgeted in those columns so it makes it hard to gauge what we've done or where the money in the past has come for because there certainly have been comp ed claims and things like that and with them not being allocated into these same um, accounts for prior years at least for the current year that we're working on it looks as if we've inflated our budget now I understand what you're saying but considering the enormous gap in our expenditures and revenues inflating our expenditures seems uh, it's it's not the type of um way that i like to look at things because when we're looking okay. then at having to cut mm -hmm. 
to me it looks like we have to cut more. Okay. And so I just prefer, I mean, I understand what you're saying, and I, and I know we've heard claims and we know we have these outstanding lawsuits, but, you know, I'm just, I'm just concerned um, that we're adding things in that haven't been there, even just with our other insurance. I mean, if we need other insurance or in the past we have not been appropriately budgeting for that, but it looks that we have been based on the errors and omissions that's under there. It's an additional $80,000. It's not uh, chump change. And especially with the types of things we were looking at last year in terms of cuts and the small dollar values that were on there. So I just, I, I don't want to blindly say, oh, well, you know, let's just take that out of there because that certainly is not a smart <laughs> response to our business manager telling us that, you know, we might need this. But I, I, I have a hard time with the numbers as they appear on here and really understanding the necessity for them at this okay. point. Okay. Although I must say I do with elections coming up and with, you know, with conferences and, and materials and things like that, I think it's very important that we have money budgeted for education and, and, the, and those things. So it's, it's a year that I think that's an important thing to have budgeted in there. One of the things is that if you look at the very first line up there, the actual expense in 0910 for conferences for the board was $9,500. And then we budgeted only 2000 and the cost so far this year is $8,132. And if you look across there, we've only budgeted 3500 So certainly the money needs, uh, probably needs to be increased in that particular account. So uh, I'm here asking that you uh, give me some guidance as to what you want to do with the board's budget. Okay. My question is, 529 insurance, mm -hmm. is that paying our yearly insurance $80,000? That 81.6 is the estimate of what the insur errors on emission insurance is going to be. However, that $80,000 is there in case we need other insurance costs are we predicting needing other insurance costs? I don't know that. Perhaps. You know, we're not going to have that information until April, May, when they come back and the insurance broker goes out to PSBA or whoever they go out to and get the estimate of what the insurance is going to be. So we do not have that information yet. And certainly that at that point, that number can come down or it may not be enough to cover so I know you talked about the thirty thousand, but why is it twice the eight ninety twice? I can't see that part over there. You explained about the zero and then the yes. one the Yes. You see that uh, those two numbers are there because I think that there probably would be that need for that money. So if you want to discuss this, come back to it. If you want to wait until we have some more information, what would you like to do? Maria, I have a couple questions. Sure. <coughs> Under the board conferences, is mm -hmm. that including our PSDA training? Is that no. Why it no. I don't believe so. It could be. I'm confused what conferences covers then. If you would go to the a conference out in Hershey and there would be costs there, it may be that particular. I would have to go back and find out whether that, whether the cost for the PSBA training is in that particular I'm conference. just wondering because I'm, I'm no. the only no. people that have gone out to Harrisburg was when we went out for the legislative. And that was myself, Jen, and Carrie, and I'm sure it wasn't. And Carrie and I attend, right, and then Carrie and I attended something. We shared a hotel room one mm -hmm. night. And then I know when I was elected to the board, it was the last fiscal year, I did attend like a, mm -hmm. a training. Mm -hmm. I will get that detail for you. But. Okay. Yeah. Um, as far as the copier lease and the supplies, mm -hmm. um, curious to know why for these supplies we're pushing it up to $10,500. I'd like to know what supplies they are that's falling under there that we can look at cutting. Okay. The other question I have is, uh, as far as the copying, since we now have our new board docs, should that not also cut some of the cost? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Okay. Um, and as far as miscellaneous, what are we looking at as being miscellaneous? Because to me, miscellaneous is could be anything. I um, like this but it means. could be um, something that's not covered by the chart of accounts, not something that PDE does not fall in any other of those particular criteria. And uh, the 8, 810 or the 820 there claims, uh, we could cover some of those costs with claims. I could have put the $72,000 in claims, yeah. and perhaps I should have, and that would have eliminated some of this conversation. Yeah, that, that well, here, here's some correct with this. But the conversations of the lawyers that we had, we're looking at these claims of $72,000. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, and I heard that correctly, this actually should be three or four times. That was what I was, we were told, yes. That could be three, it should probably be three times that much. So there are claims with the 10 cases out there. Yes. Could, yes. Could be in there in a half yes. million dollars. Yes. Boy, we need to be quiet, okay. I will gather the information that you've asked me to do and uh, provide that to you. <coughs> okay, you have another question? No, it's uh, not a question. I, I just would like to say, you know, I know from our own internal workings here, I, I am surprised to see this large increase in the end again. If it's claims that is the bulk of it, fine, we have outstanding claims. But I know that we have made efforts, and it does not make it look here that we have been <coughs> frugal and, and prudent as board members, but I mean, there is no, nobody's putting in for any reimbursement on mileage anywhere, nobody's, but you know, we really, I don't, I, I don't recall anybody ordering any books or, you know, anything. So I'm just surprised to see these numbers go up because we've been asking a lot of our district and I just want to make sure that it's clear that we have been prudent and, you know, making good decisions with our own um, workings, and I don't think that that is properly reflected here in terms of our own budget as a board. And, and if you do order book, uh, book just as a sample, normally that's sent to the district for nothing. As a sample book, if one was ordered by even a teacher, oh, or that a would board not members, be that would not be a board member. Usually, it will come as a sample. General Mister, did you receive the the books? As a new board member? I got them when I went to the conference. There was stuff provided, and then Mr. Mall had given me. I just because I know when I just got on the, those were some of the books that we received yep. that I received yep. from the district. I guess my question sort of goes back to like what Jen was saying earlier is we, we looked at the 0910 actuals. We budgeted a lot less, and I'm sure if we've looked in the past, I'd be curious to know previous years what we, what were our actuals, and why we have budgeted so much less in some of those areas where we know that we're still spending a lot more. So I will go see how far I can go back and get that information. Mm -hmm. Marie, what are errors and omissions liability? That's an insurance policy for the district and the board for any anything you would omit in a contract or any type of error you would make, and it's and it's uh, very valuable for the district and and the board. The SBI. So having never been to a budget hearing before, I don't know what the expectation is with something like this at this point. Is this, we wait until you have more? Well, I'm going to provide you with the uh, detail for the account 320 up at the top, uh, the copier lease, uh, and the supplies Y up to 10,500. Can, uh, can we cut supplies because of board docs? Uh, and so, uh, then the other thing is that any other account that you would like to have the detail for. I think this being the first year of board docs, I think that's reasonable. And we could, if there's money left over, it's going to be used for something else. So it, I don't It goes think back into the yes. fund balance. And, and, and I usually the first year of anything, you don't cut, you see where you fall. Yes, we did and then by then you could judge that for the second, third year on. So I, I don't see where that's really, uh, you know, overboard. <coughs> I, I think it's reasonable. Right. 
Yes. For the, the coffees, you said we have our own specific coffee. Yes. Well, the just the business office and the superintendent's office and the and the assistant chief of staff superintendent, Mr. Kishin. We all share one coming that coffee. Okay. Then you're not. I was curious to know if we could find out count how many coffees are made with our packets and everything we get. So we'll see if that's going to be. So what are the items on here then that potentially we're looking to could potentially decrease? What are our like discretionary maybe we could highlight where which particular well, I think line one of them should be the copier lease. Okay. I have on my list here copier lease supplies. Uh, yes. And uh, the decaf for 320. Um, and I don't know whether you want to look at decreasing the claims. Are you out of your mind? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I'm asking that question. Is that what you want to do? And if we did de decrease the claims, where would the money come from? Uh, it would come from the budgetary reserve if there was money there. Budgetary the reserve. Did you say uh, general uh, supplies too? General supplies. Yes, I have okay. that also. Okay. And what about this insurance other? Is there a date at which we will know when and if that $80,000 needs to still be there? When they come back with our actual cost for. And we won't get that until May? Uh, April, April. April, beginning of May, yes. Before you do your final budget. So, so we'll be able to see where, that, where we're yes. at with that. Yes, you will. There could be a large, there could be a savings there. Yes, there could be. So yes. that's 80000 potentially there. Okay. Okay. And right, the advertising is that I mean, it just we have to every meeting we that have to advertise. advertising. Do you look at that advertising what we only have budgeted? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're at sixty eight hundred and thirty eight dollars right now and I wanna tell you that we and, and you know this because I just sent it out in the Friday memo. We are doing advertising for our bids on our website. Uh, we're not we're not printing. We're posting it to the website with the help of technology. We are sending out a one-page letter to vendors telling them that the documents are available on our website and they must go out and get those documents rather than us photocopying them, stuffing them in envelopes, and paying in excess of a dollar and a half for each package to go. So we're, we're streamlining the advertising for bids and the bid documents and, uh, and saving Money there. We send out about 230 for supplies and and um, athletic supplies, paper supplies, and uh, um, custodial maintenance supplies. We're posting them to the web and letting the vendor go out and get those documents instead of us having to mail them. So we're going to save some money there. And I, I think one of the questions we had asked before was about being able to legally, uh, as far as advertising our meetings on the website and seeing where we can eliminate. So that was one of the questions we had before. We can just double check what we are. We have a mandate waiver for advertising for bidding, but I don't believe there's a mandate waiver for advertising for board meetings. And the mandate <coughs> waiver window has closed. There's no more. You cannot apply for an additional mandate waivers. Okay. Um, I had spoken to every principal and about their budgets. They're part of that 4% that what we probably think of as discretionary. But uh, in light of that and you having that 90 page document, are there specific items on there? I would prefer not to go page by page and ask you if you have an item on that page. So if you have specific items that we can address or whether you um, have questions specifically for the principals. Uh, one of the concerns that I had in going line by line was that we would have one line that would be for Tracy School and the next line might be for March School. And so I was trying to streamline that process for building budgets and their particular items, which are their budgets, but they are dispersed within that 90 page document wherever they may fall. So I don't know if you have individual items that we can go to. Marine. Yes. I have two degrees in accounting. 
And if we do not follow this in the order in which you gave it to us, if we jump and we've done, done this for the past eight years, I have a question on page 10, I have a question on 72, I have a question on 90, I have a question on 5. We don't get an adequate budget. We should look at this and see what is discretional and then pass, just go flip the page if there's no questions. But if we're going to jump all over, we're, we're going to be right back to where we've been in, in the past eight years. And that is not fair uh, to the citizens. A good budget is going over uh, uh, it's discretionary items, line by line. So if we got a mix up, and it's a discretionary item, and we're talking about all the elementary schools, then we talk about all the elementary schools. We talk about the middle schools, we talk about the middle school classes. You can't go from middle school to high school to uh, elementary school and come out with the budget that is in line and straight. That's my personal feeling, but it's based on, you know, almost six years of accounting classes. So I, I understand, you know, you have uh, credentials uh, uh, that are better than me, uh, credentials to CPA, but I just wanted, want you to know that in order to do this, we have to do this in some form of order and not jump all over the book. Okay. I hope everybody agrees with you, or some. So do you want to look at salaries and benefits? If not, we'll eliminate those no. portions. Salaries okay. and benefits we can't do anything about. Okay. Okay. Really okay. So then do you want to look at contracted services, the 300 accounts? They basically are um, consultants. They basically are uh, the IU cost. Most of them are in the 300 accounts. Uh, so in looking at this, I'll have to find the first page that perhaps you want to look at and then you can tell me whether you have anything on that page. Is that what you want to do? I, I think consultants in the IU, if we take them, Wait I think that can we knock them out, then we, then we have time to then we go on to something else. Well, what is the principals have been asked to come. I'm yes. assuming we that they go. were asked to, to come, come because to it was expected right. that they were going to get up yeah. and present right. their portion right. of this binder. Right. 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 answer any questions you may have. Right. I think we should do then with the elementary schools. I think we're 100% right. Right. I mean, I don't. What's the consensus on the board? Let the, can we go to the principals now? Well, but I think the, the elementary school is discretionary. Okay, Marie, where do you want to start with them at? Uh, Cheston. Well, can I just ask a question first about this before we preempt this? I'm just curious when the building principals were asked to, sorry, do their budgets for this year, what guidelines were they given? What were the parameters given to the principals? Were you asked, were they, were they asked to um, consider enrollment the same? Were they asked to all have... Sorry, I shouldn't want to be talking. We, uh, within the administration building, Gary Cortez prepares a enrollment projection for next year. We use that to determine what the allocation would be for a budget. So at $124.25, $125, approximately that, then we de determine what that allocation would be and say to them that you have 71 thousand three hundred twenty dollars and looking at your budget for the last two or three years where do you think you need to put that money when I spoke to them I said to them you may have to answer specific questions about your budget and you may be asked to cut your budget and we have they have had a five percent cut in their budget last year we did not do that so far this year however we have talked about that and so whether there's any questions about Cheston's budget, which is behind tab 10 within your book, do you have any questions? And perhaps Tracy can tell you what uh, items she would have within her budget that may be considered discretionary and which, uh, and there are 300s in there for contracted contracts, but there's also 
dues and fees. Well, can I just please go back before we ask Mrs. Piazza? I, I want to make sure I'm clear. You've stated that there was a 5% budget decrease in the buildings for this current year? No, last year. Oh, last, year. Last, year. last year. So for the 9-10 year. And the 10-11 as well. And a 10 11. Okay, because the reason why I ask is that based on the information we were given here, it's very hard to figure out if that is accurate because I don't know what enrollment projections did because we were not given enrollment numbers along with what the expenditures were. But I did take the liberty of um, looking at February's current enrollment numbers that were, you know, we get the update and noticed that the, based on the numbers that are here that principals have been asked to work with at a $124.25 per student. Some schools, based on their enrollment, will actually be spending $133 per student, and others will be down to $117 just based on current enrollment. So I'm concerned, you know, we're talking about, we're saying that there was a 5% decrease, but the numbers that we've been presented with showing that there's no way of that reflecting, and I'll just give a, for instance, and I'm sorry, I, maybe I'll leave the school out, but you know, we have one school that's actual in 910 was 115,000, and they're budgeted this year at 91,000. That doesn't seem like. We're using next year's projected budget, uh, projected enrollment to determine what the okay. application was. Uh, and and I, I see what the projected enrollments versus current actual, so that's why I am just a little bit, that's why I'm asking the question for clarity. Mm -hmm. So for instance, um, Shawnee Elementary School is projected at 559 students for next year, but they currently have 593. So, you know, I'm just looking mm -hmm. at, at these things, trying to better understand what the principals were asked to work with. So you're saying that they were asked to go on, they were given a per pupil allocation, yes. and they were given a pupil estimate, yes. and they were asked to take that money and then distribute it across their budget the way they best felt correct. that it would need to be allocated. Yes. Okay. So, can I just understand this? So instead of saying to the principals, you need to tell us what you need, mm -hmm. we're saying this is how much you get, spend it how you want. Mm -hmm. So if they need less than what they get, they still get to spend that. They not necessarily get to spend that. They are very frugal, and we all, they also in, have stated to me, all of them have stated to me that they are very frugal, mm -hmm. and they, if they don't need that money, they're not spending that money. They're not going out and buying things to stick in the closet and wait for next year. So in looking at this, can they cut 5% out of their budgets? Um, most of them have said that probably they can cut 5% out of the budget, but it would be very difficult to do based upon the monies that we use for stimulus this year for uh, the consumables and not having to cover those costs, but next year not having any stimulus money and having to cover those costs. So, Can I also ask that along uh -huh. the same line, since it applies to all of the schools, you know, we're talking about a textbook adoption for social studies. Is that money something that the building budgets are supposed to absorb for the textbooks for each school, or does that come out of a different part? I know we were hoping to use you know, stimulus money, but in a regular cycle, or is it the building budgets that have to pay for the tech? No, so that's, that's not included. So it's consumables on the ongoing curricular. Yes, it's, it's not only consumables, and if you turn to behind tab 10, in your binder, there is Cheston's budget. Right. And so she, if you have any specific questions about that, and... I, I just don't want to ask my specific questions because they relate to all schools, mm -hmm. just to well, <laughs> Mrs. She, Piazza, because she, she alphabetically got the first... <laughs> the I, already, I already told them. I have my little speech they've to speak already for half determined of them. that. <laughs> Palmer, Paxinosa, Shawnee, and Tracy have already determined that Tracy is going to I drew the short straw. It's all okay. The oh, okay. See, I figured alphabetically you yes, just you know absolutely. have the, the, the yes. look of the draw yes. here. Um, so, if student projections change, does the budget change accordingly? We try and go back to them and tell them that uh, you have more students and you need more money. The other thing is that they're very, very resourceful among all of them. And well, they said that to me, that they would be looking at others to help them out. You know, the textbook, uh, what do we call that? The textbook manager, the textbook uh, that we're using the barcoding for, I heard from many principals today who said, if I need two books, I know where I can find it because it's out there. And we can look and see where those mm -hmm. textbooks are. And somebody says to me, well, what if I need three sets for one student, two sets for one student? Wasn't that what it was today? 
two sets for one student because that student is a ESL student or that student is special needs or whatever and one set goes to the babysitter and one step and one set goes home and that type of thing so we're able to go out there and find out where those books are, those books are so okay, let's yeah. get started with the principals because mm -hmm. they're okay. here and they would like to get on sometime tonight yeah well, and actually we've asked them to attend all meetings not only tonight's meeting so they they would be uh, they're going to be here for all three happening. well we hope so mm -hmm. yeah Okay. Tracy, Tracy, under your line for field trips, do the PTA pay for all your field trips or not? Um, currently, the PTA does pay for field trips. However, they too are feeling the budget crunch, and so in in that being the case, particularly our fourth grade tries to go on a trip that is a little bit more substantial, um, and so you will see. I think in yours, I'm not sure that. For example, there was a $700 addition. That was a grant that was written by a couple of my teachers to supplement what the PTA would be providing. You are correct that in thus far, I have not had to spend money out of my building budget for field trips. But this year, I will be spending that $700 grant to help supplant or support the PTA's mission. Otherwise, the tr otherwise that particular trip would not be happening. And so you have even an addition for next year then? Or if I'm reading this right? I did put in my projected number for next year. I did put in $500. Um, I have 15. In, I have 15. Um, let me take a quick look. Okay. I, no, you're right. I have $1,500 in there. We probably will not need that, but I did put that in there in the event that we would again have a field trip that was going to um, be out of the range of the PTA that we thought had an educational value, then there would be a, a way for those students to participate if, okay, if we so deemed if appropriate. Okay, so if you don't use that money totally, where does it come back to? Does it come back to the district, or is that put into our budget for next year? That no, comes it's back not. to the district. It would come back to the district. <laughs> um, if in the event that I would see that I am running short, we have the ability to transfer funds. There is a process for transferring funds from one budget mm -hmm. item to one budget line item to another. So if I was finding myself running low in a particular budget line item and knowing I was not going to spend that field trip, I may transfer that fund into that particular line item. If I did not do that, then at the end of the fiscal year, that would come back to the district. And explain to me, Marie, where it says telephone and lease technology. Why is that the EDU center? Are you responsible for that? Yes, then? yes. We develop that budget based upon the contracts that we have, yes. And could you, could you explain that, go down and differentiate, and I'm not picking on you, uh, but I don't understand what general supplies are and then general supplies, general supplies, general supplies. Are they books? There are, under gen general supplies is a um, that typical uh, um, particular category, but each one of those where it says general supplies represents a different subject area. For example, um, your f the first, uh, second one there, the largest amount, let me just get my first one there. Um, that is the, that one is truly a general supply. So, um, it may be center, manipul manipulatives for a center. It may be um, pencils, crayons, construction paper, um, you know, really anything that doesn't fit under another, you know, that is, doesn't fit under another particular category. Then you would go and look at another one of the general supplies. There's a general supply for music. So under that particular, but particular general supply code, Anything that I'm purchasing out of that money would be related to the music department. Music, sheet music for a chorus or orchestra, um, additional instruments if, if we had to do that. Um, that's the primary pieces are music. And you do that for art? And we do that for art, we yeah. do that for reading, we do that for language arts, we do that for science, social studies. Where's the on phys, down. Ed? phys Ed is in there as well. Um, give me one second. That 140 right there, yes. that 600 dollars right there, and this identified there as being fund 10. 1100 is is uh, regular education. The building is 11, and then that 140 identifies it as physet.
Uh, this 1241 down here is a learning support. 1243 is uh, gifted. Uh, 2110, I believe, is guidance. And then there is 2120, which is medical. Uh, 2271 is a new account number from PDE that says that we must uh, record for certificated staff there. And this is supplies for uh, conferences for certificated staff. So. Uh, Twenty-three eighty is principal, and so on and so forth. Questions? I'm just I'm just curious. I was actually looking through when we got this um, the accreditation update, and you do state in here, and I don't know if it's if are you on the team for yes. your building. So one of the things that I was looking at, I was trying to figure out what goals and. Um, recommendations that were made were being applied into our budget you know I, I did actually go through this and look to see if we could figure out if we were trying to meet the things that were stated and fulfilling needs and one of the things you do state in here is that um, that your school lost the CCLC grant and it, it says so after school program is being partially funded by United Way CCLC grant was declined we will use district funds in conjunction with United Way funds to provide after school programs for this current year I'm wondering what did you plan any money in this budget for next year to support that program? Um, not in this budget. We have been fortunate thus far, and I don't know what the future holds for us there, that um, the district has been able to allocate some funds through their budgets, either through Title I supports or through stimulus funding to help us run our after school or summer programming. CCLC was a grant that we applied for seven or eight years ago and was just around $400,000 for three years. We then were um, renewed at $150,000 a year for I think it was another two or three years. Um, and then either this year or last year was the first that we did not have that funding. I believe it was last year we did not have that funding. So we, um, with the help of, of Family Connection, did some grant writing with the United Way. They gave, gave us partial funding. And then the way I designed the programs at Cheston, I was able to um, split the monies that Dr. Roberts' office was able to provide us to run both the summer and after supplement that mm -hmm. after school program. In years, with the exception of this year, I ran two simultaneous, a district run per se, or district funded, and a CCLC funded. This year we combined the efforts, so it was one program, but two funding sources. Okay. I, I just, when I was looking through here, I was alarmed because I certainly wouldn't want to see that lost. But again, if we're, you know. In, pl in planning, you know, we, we certainly have planned for, for next year on paper, and we have um, grants out there to the United Way again. But yes, it would be contingent upon the, the capacity of that mm -hmm. um, and the effect. Uh, effectiveness of that would be contingent upon can the district help support those programs again. That is not indicated within this daily budget. <coughs> and also I noticed you needed some furniture. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do need furniture. When I first got to got to Cheston we kind of made a priority list of items that we needed and I've been checking that off as we go. There was a, a point in time that again the district um, was able to support that through at that time through uh, Mr. Kish's office there was um, a, a budget fund and so some of the things that we were able to allocate funds for came through the district fund again most recently what is coming out of my building budget are when things are of disrepair and need to be replaced however one of the things that was stated is that we as administrators speak to our colleagues um, and so this year I had to replace some desks but the reality of that is some of our other elementary schools and middle schools were renovated and therefore furniture sitting in warehouses so their old furniture became our new furniture um, and so that is you know the way that we try to be fiscally responsible and make the most use of the products that we have available to us Thank you. so dr. volcano do you find this this discretionary funds here um, so far no I don't I don't see any anything. No. I'm looking. I was just looking at the general supplies, and I I don't see anything that really pops out as a a, a major uh, 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 fund balance that's over what uh, limit. 
that, you, I, that I'm looking for. If you, want to you know, I think the reality of what you're going to find with all school budgets is one that we went to, you know, as you well know, a site-based budget, not a true site-based budget, it's more a building-based budget, um, which Ms. Bellotti, I think it was, had mentioned is at the discretion of the principal to allocate to what account. Um, and part of making that work is a trust factor from not only you, the board, but also our central administration to the principals that we are looking at our programs, aligning that to our district goals, um, and looking at student needs. The reality is it comes down to 124 and change per student. So when we are looking at cutting our building based <coughs> budgets, we really are looking at nickels and dimes. 5% um, from the district, from the Cheston budget is, uh, is just under $4,000. Um, and really, I, th I think the message that we're sending there is that we're devaluing the worth of a student. Right now, the worth of a student's education is $124 per child. So, you know, I, I do, you know, certainly my colleagues and I have talked about this, and if we are asked to cut our budgets because we know that we are in dire straits and something has to give somewhere, we will comply with what we were asked to do and make that work. I mean, because I think that's the type of individuals you have working for you in this district is we work under the parameters that we're given. Um, and Tracy, isn't it, a mere, isn't it a fact that a lot of your elementary school teachers do buy their own supplies, like pencils? There, there was a time in our district, again, you're going back quite a number of years, that we were able to, out of um, such items as that first general supply budget, teachers would ask for borders for bulletin boards, for birthday pencils. Those days are long gone. Mm -hmm. We are s truly buying the bare minimum. So yes, teachers spend out of their own pocket. The amount of money is that my colleagues and I spend out of our own pocket is staggering. I think it would blow you away. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, that is a reality. Um, one of the things that we talked about is if we need to cut 5% off of our budget, certainly we are willing to, to look at that um, for the sake of our district. This year we have some um, latitude in doing that because we were again fortunate Dr. Roberts' frugal um, spending and careful looking at her budget was able to allocate some, some stimulus funds for some of our consumables um, projected out for a couple of years. So we did not know that at the time that we had to create these. We create these budgets fairly early in the year. And so yes, I have a little bit of discretionary fund in consumable areas that would not have an immediate impact this year. The cautionary note to that is when Dr. Roberts or the district's um, discretionary funds, stimulus funds, run dry, which will happen very soon, we will be looking to be able to replace that money with something. The other um, piece that is noted, and I think Ms. Holtzberger asked, was regarding our class size enrollment, or not our class size enrollment, our building enrollment. Um, and Marie answered that correctly in that, no, we do not just call up and say we got another 50 students. We first see, can we make that work with the monies that we have? <coughs> can we call our colleagues and say, what can you help me out with? Um, you know, I can tell you right now, the projected number for Cheston, as it stood based on what is in your book, has already surpassed that on what we are looking at based on the number of students who are calling to register for kindergarten. The other reality for Cheston is Hope 6 area is opening. And so starting April, slightly in February, but starting April through the next two, three years, you're going to see a potential um, growth of 150 to 200 kids in that particular neighborhood. So it is very cautionary that I say that we take large amounts of money out of a budget because the time will come very soon that we will need it for, for one reason or another. Can, yeah. can I ask, how many My students is, is that been about 150? And it hasn't changed. One, one thing, question I have <coughs> when you say uh, you're, you're submitting uh, 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 books, and I think, does that mean consumable afterwards? Yes. Or, I'm okay. not sure I'm following what yeah, you're asking. It, it, yeah, okay, so these are, but these are the, the Yeah, so consumable books would be such books? things as handwriting books, spelling okay. books, math books. They are workbooks that are used, mm -hmm. uh, in other words, consumed, and then yeah. thrown away, sent home with the student, what have you. Okay. One time you, use. You don't need any books other than No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> um, what I am saying is Dr. Roberts was able to help us with some of those okay. consumable books this year and for a couple of years in one subject okay. area. The reality then, there are textbooks which are non-consumable and that will mm -hmm. come under 
Um, another category there. there they are up there, mm -hmm. 642s. Um, the 642s, thank you. Um, which would be things like our non-consumable science book, our, non our tech hardcover textbook um, in reading, in math, particularly, um, particularly in third through fourth grade, although reading is first through fourth grade. There are times, and this is where the textbook manager comes in, that, that barcoding system mm -hmm. that they talked yes. about. So as we purchase books or as we do our inventory, those books stay from year to year. You only eliminate something that was ruined. Right. So I might look and say, okay, I have a tw 125 math books. I have 140 students coming in. Mm -hmm. My first caller to my colleagues with an email saying, I need this many books. Can anyone help me? They will then ship them over, and then I see where am I short. Then I have to go to that budget line and purchase whatever I'm short after well, talking to my year, colleagues. But one thing we don't see with the uh, non-consumable is the number of years you had those books. In other words, if you have a, a math book and you're telling me it's five years old and you want to turn it over, I might we know, really, um, question if you're telling that, me it's ten years old. That is true. Um, the reality is we do not turn over a book. The only reason we would turn over a book as, as far as damage or just not re-putting it into the circulation is if it is damaged or if it is lost. Yeah, but you do have to update your books from here. That is through, that's a different piece. That is through a curriculum revision. Okay. For example, they gave social studies as the example. Um, you asked if that would come out of our building budget. Typically in our district, the initial year of an adoption, which for social studies would be this, this year potentially, that has come out of district level funds, sometimes stimulus funds, sometimes a district level curriculum budget. Okay. Thereafter, after that initial purchase, typically, then it became back to the building budget. So if this year Dr. Roberts ordered 110 social studies books for grade three, I'm covered. But next year I might need 120. I do my little email to my colleagues, they don't have them, then I go to that, that line item and purchase what I'm sure. So yeah. the initial purchase is typically through the district, but then years after, until we do another curriculum purchase, we stay with that book for however many years that is, another curriculum purchase comes up at the district level, we well, then are pro provided that I would say that next, next year to all the element, every, everybody, is, you know, I, I would like to see them put the number of years you had the book, because I know for a fact that the library, at the library, at the high school, uh, one student who works at uh, um, uh, one of the drugstores on South Side said, well, I was using a 12-year-old history book. And I said to him, well, up to what? And it the, was to, to 1865. Well, there, is a, hasn't changed much. there is a uh, so, curriculum revision cycle that was in place for our district. It was typically five years. That is something that our district is re-looking at so that it is an ongoing cycle. So that's something that you'll that you'll be privy to or you know, have ongoing information about. Um, but there is a reality, which is why Social Studies came to the forefront this year, that Social Studies was our oldest oh, book. Books, right. um, you know, that book is probably 15 to 18 years old. It's a book that I used when I was teaching, and that was many, many years ago. So, so yes, we are way behind the times in Social Studies, which is why we're thankful that this is the adoption that we're making this year. Most other, if not all other, curriculum areas are within a reasonable scope of um, of recent copyright. Tracy, why are the dues <coughs> and the fees different for every school? Is it based on the teachers? Um, dues and fees here are, Marie, this is the one that's the principal? Yes. Dues and fees here are, we are, we are entitled to one um, professional, dues to one professional organization per administrator. So for example, Cheston's is higher because I'm talking about two administrators, myself and Mr. Yanders. The high school's talking about, you know, five or six. Okay, that's all I want to So that's why there's a discretion there. Jen, you have a question. I, I do, and, and this is, again, this is something that you're sparing everybody else having to answer. I know all of the, most of the elementary <laughs> okay. schools run some sort of like a summer program, whether it be, um, Pre-K pre or, pre -K pre or, or, you know, um, I know my son was in one for a couple of summers, an enrichment, some extra help, intervention sure. program. <clears throat> Does that get budgeted in this building budget as well? Current, in current years, it has not. That would be the same response as what I gave you for the Cheston CCLC versus summer budget. That, over the past um, 
as many years as I can remember, really has either come out of the director of elementary ed or secondary ed's budget or Title I funding. Um, okay. There's certain provisions within that or stimulus funds. The reason why I ask that, and I, don't, and I don't know if this is a realistic, but you know, I've been trying to think, okay, what are some ways we can save money? And again, looking through this you know, book with me, it's most of our elementary schools don't have air conditioning in the summer. Um, or at, at all and I was wondering what the potential was to consolidate our summer programs into our schools that have been renovated that have updated HVAC and originally when I had thought that Paxinosa was going to be done this summer I thought wow what a great central location you know for all of this but I, I'm just wondering just I don't know if this is an appropriate time to mention these things at these meetings again I've never been to here but that's why I was curious I think if, we if this was money included in your building it budgets. Is not, it is not included in our building budget. I think we had talked about that one such example is um, Summer Sizzle, which is also a, a community partner run program. Mm -hmm. um, they sent, they centralized to Paxinosa. Mm -hmm. um, we were actually approached and had a discussion from the central office level to the principal level, I believe it was last year or maybe two years ago, about trying to centralize all of our programs as well. Um, and it was the opinion of the building level principals as well as the teaching staff, to be honest, that we maintain it within our own community, particularly for the pre-K program so that they had um, some familiarity with the buildings that they would be attending. Also for pre-K, for an example, one of the things that we really strongly emphasize is whatever our positive support system is, so for Chess and the Cougar Code. And then though there are common threads through each of those programs across our district. We each have slight uniquenesses as well. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to be able to really target some of those social readiness skills at the building that they would be attending. So, you know, I would say that it's not something that we are opposed to, but um, at last survey, our better judgment was to maintain it within your own setting. Um, that also spares <laughs> Mr. Hightower, who is the building that we always call <laughs> upon, because it becomes, it does become very challenging one of the challenges of summer programming is for your custodial staff trying to get the building ready for the next year. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, when we put it all in, all in one place, that becomes a challenge for that particular building. So Thank we've given that some consideration. I, 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 another <laughs> curveball if you do that, if we maintain going back to the same building that's air conditioned year after year, there's no downtime to do any repairs. And that's also essential. So there's differences in busing cost. I mean, we tried sure. to weigh out all those pieces, and there's <laughs> definitely pros and cons to both mm -hmm. scenarios. Uh, let's let's put another. Yeah, so, so someone else there. is going <laughs> to. <laughs> uh oh. Tracy, I don't need no, to go ahead. Question. General supplies, music, and the um, non-capital equipment music. What, what falls into that? What, you know, don't worry about it. Can you general don't worry about supplies? General supplies, like sheet music, things like that. And I'm just the general supply music is, um, let me just pull it up here and I can tell you exactly what we order, but it's predominantly sheet music. Actually, every one, everything under my, my um, checkbook registry, for lack of a better term, under the general supplies one is sheet music. Um, every, everything's sheet music, there. Um, that would all come under here. In my case, I didn't have to purchase any of that this year, but yes, that would all come under there. And then the second one, Jody, I'm sorry. Was the, the non-capital equipment? Is that? I don't know if I have anything in there, do I? I don't think I budgeted anything in there. Like, what falls under that? Like, that's what I'm trying to That would be something that would cost more than $500, so they may be buying. Uh, instruments. That's, that's, I and just that, want to yeah. make sure I'm understanding. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think forward. the other piece that might come out of music, if I'm, for example, if I'm having the um, piano tune, that actually does not come out of that music budget that comes out of a um, c contracted service okay. piece. Uh, that actually is in a 432 account, which right. is a repair and maintenance of equipment. Right. Okay. And I'm only asking no, because this is uh -huh. going to follow up with a general question that uh -huh. That's fine. Yeah. The postage and software, what software would the schools be ordering mm -hmm. that wouldn't be mm -hmm. done through technology? Um, we order very little software at the building level at this particular point. Most of that does come through Mr. Drago's office or at least consulted with Mr. Drago's office. Um, there might be something like A to Z.com. Um, or it is a is a particular piece that is a resource 
um, piece of software that we might get out of our building budgets. So it's, a, it's basically a site license to then let our staffs access resources, res um, resources like um, you might want a, a guided, you might want a book on a first grade level that's talking about blending. And so we can go to that particular resource, pull up that, and then it's a duplicatable piece. But, but there's very, very little actual software that comes out of our budgets. And I don't mean to change the stuff. No, like that's fine. That's short, I mean, stick it's okay. The first one. So if you're sort of Completely comfortable, go right ahead. Is that something with the software that a lot of you are all looking together and you're doing as a group then? Or is it something that's Absolutely. That's what that's 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 with the software. Okay. Yep. We do not purchase anything in software that does not go through Mr. Drago's office. And so, like I said, is actual um, software that I'm sticking into a computer is, is very rare. Some of that has come, for an example, the math team talks about software on occasion, but again, that goes through that, um, that chain of command and ultimately to, doc, to uh, Mr. Drago's budget, you know, Mr. Ba Drago, Drago's budget and um, consultation before we make those right. purchases. It was a twofold question. The reason okay. I'm asking is because this sort of goes back to, I know the general supplies. We have a, a place that we order them from, correct? We, price. we sure in large use, um, we in large do use one vendor. I'm going to say that um, there are competitive competitors who are equally, who have become equally um, <laughs> <coughs> equally responsible, equally competitive, um, and without throwing names of that particular company out here, we've also become rather dissatisfied with the services and the products from our current largest vendor, and so many of us are are really considering what products we do purchase from them. You know, are they are they furniture? Are they things that can break easily, like a um, listening center? Then I would choose not to use that vendor that you're, you know, that we have typically used and go through someone else. So yes, we've had a, a vendor that has been fairly heavily used in our district, but I think um, the time has come that we need to investigate other vendors. And we have the, and we do have use the catalog discount program through the IU. And so there are vendors that join that program that provide a particular discount. And we, the board actually approves that list of those vendors. As some of our, as some of those competitors have seen their, their market um, decline from the district, they too became competitive and then went through um, Marie's office to get the proper um, permissions to, to be utilized within our school systems. Tracy, one quick question. You eliminated uh, petty cash, which a lot of people like to see, but that no, doesn't I eliminated give that. What? I eliminated that because I found that through the petty cash, there were things that should be coded to postage that were in, in petty cash, which is not the proper account number. So you might be buying certain things that should be going into other account numbers. Okay. It's a process, it's not an account. That okay, to go so they so. will, but somebody who does shell out their money, if they hand in a slip to you, that's correct. You will be able to get reimbursed through that's you. Correct. They would get reimbursed. Yes. There is a standard here for the district, and Jody, I know you had okay. another question. Yeah. There's a standard here from the from the district level that we have to abide by, but there's also a standard within our building level. No teacher is permission permitted to just go out and buy something no, without no, running it through me first. Yeah. Um, and then I follow the district protocol. Right. Um, so what would happen if someone purchased something that was okayed? Then that. The funds for that would come out of the appropriate um, line item budget. So if it were <laughs> something related to math, I would go to my math general supply line mm -hmm. and have them um, take those funds out of there when they yeah, cut the check. That's, and, and I assume that goes for everybody. That's then. correct. Absolutely. Okay, yes. so we don't have to ask that again. Okay. Yes. 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 This really wasn't a question. I guess this is something that I'd like to look at is when we look at purchasing instruments, we look at purchasing the strings. Are we doing that district wide? If we're buying more than one instrument, we typically mm -hmm. would bid for those things, especially if it's over a certain dollar amount. Uh, the district also has a mandate waiver, but we'd still go out and get quotes from three catalogs mm -hmm. to find out where the lowest price would be. And that again is something that um, we as colleagues, but mainly through our music, music teachers, um, Mrs. Miller being the coordinator of that department this year, would talk to across the schools, does someone have a violin, we're short this many at this school, and they would do that trading process mm -hmm. internally. Um, then if there was a shortage, we would see how many of a particular instrument and, and go out for bid for the appropriate numbers. I'm going to go back to general supplies. I realize we want to look 
at something online or something that way. One of the things I'd like to see our district do is to look at our local vendors and see what they can offer us so that we can start putting money back into our community. When I said that we we look at some other vendors, us. some of our local vendors have been have been very competitive, and and those are ones that we are using currently and uh, to like a greater to degree. See what options they would look at if we talk about ordering a certain amount over a certain period over the year, if they would consider giving us a better discount, so we can keep some of our money. And those, I think, I would you know, I think I can speak for the district in saying some of that is under in in the works already. You know, I can certainly say from just the building <coughs> level. Um, we have several lo you know, local vendors who have been very competitive and very um, helpful in helping us maintain a, a certain budget. And one quick thing and I'll be done. Uh, you have the $500 uh, thing for your magazines, I think, for $400? Yes. One group is 3000 one is 400 You might want to put out a memo to the parents and ask if they would like to donate one of these magazines to the school for the year and how much it would cost. They cut me on magazines at Northampton. It was like $300. And I put it out to the parents because I, it would help the kids in DECA. Uh, and uh, actually, I got, uh, I got like $800. And that all went into that account. And I sent a letter to anybody if they wanted their money back. No one did. And uh, I used it for on the students. That is certainly something we can consider. We also do have um, a few community members and um, teachers and retired teachers who are very generous. So yes. um, also help us support the, the library. Yeah, libraries, they, they library is an area it. that is often donated to. Yeah, who is that? Libraries in general yeah, are yeah. often an area that somebody uh, will allocate funds, right. I, I, I earmark understand. funds when they donate them to a school. Okay. Um, We've had you up there for a while. Yes. I, um, I have one question. Okay. I'll go to one. Some of the elementary schools in the schools have eliminated travel. What is the travel? Like you have travel for the principal, travel for conference, travel, and just travel in general. What is that entail? Travel for the principal uh -huh. or for Mr. Yanders, in, in my case, Mr. Okay. Yanders and myself, as we need to come to meetings. Um, you know, for example, this week I was at several different meetings um, across the district. So what our responsibility as an employee of this district is to pay for your own travel expense to and from work each day. Right. If I'm traveling in the middle of the day or, um, you know, to alternate <coughs> sites beyond a home and one site trip, we have the ability or the, um, the choice, I guess you would say, to... Um, bill the district for those expenditures mileage. if you're choo for mileage if you're choosing not to do that then um, that's your choice and it also becomes then tax deductible so I, you know it's it's how you personally decide to because some of the limited and some haven't right. and I, I would say that was that would be some of the choice right. that if they are not not um, putting it through the district they have the option of putting it through their own personal taxes um, travel for conferences would be if a teacher or myself, in, mo in most cases, as a teacher, if they would go to a conference, um, just as you spoke about yourselves, if right. you would go to, to Harrisburg, that would be a travel expense. Um, and the other travel would be for teachers who are traveling. So for a teacher who might share uh, multiple buildings. I have a teacher who works at Cheston and at um, Forks. So not to say she does, but she technically could put in that travel, that travel expense um, under that line item. Anybody else for her? Uh, Mr. McCauley's not here? He is not. They had math and science. Okay. Math and a so I guess the next night. one's uh, Thank you, Tracy. Mary. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're next on the list. Palmer. March. March. Are you going to do March? Yeah. Who's next? Judy? Oh, I didn't see Judy. Judy's back. We Sorry, Judy. We welcome you back it's, from it's your, quite all right. your Thank illness. You. And Thank you. It's, it's nice to be back. And with that thank being you, said, thank you very much, Tracy. She's answered many of the questions I think I'll <laughs> have to good. answer. And unfortunately, I also had the budget put together for me while I was out. So, But I have done budgets here in the district for 17 years, so I'll be glad to answer as I can. That is behind tab 12, and I have it up on the screen. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Piazza. <laughs> 
Everybody's the, the students had enough. Sorry, they were very good. Where did it go? Yes, they, they have to do their report for class. I'm sure they're going home and getting that done right now. In this case, we estimated that next year, Barry Cortez estimated that the pupils would be 358 at that school, and her budget allocation at $44,482. We had all had the same conversation as to if we were to ask for a 5% budget cut, could you do that? And if you uh, could you do that, and where would you look to cut costs then for that particular uh, reduction in your budget? So specific questions here. She basically has the same account numbers that is at Cheston and every other at the oh, other so elementary same. school. Similar. And um, I don't know if you have specific questions here that you need that you would like answers to. I can share as, as you're looking through. Just philosophically, when I put a budget together, first of all, I know that it's $124 that I'm going to be putting in there, and I look at three things. I look very specifically at what is it that across the entire district that we need to have so that all children have all their supplies that they, such as their textbooks and consumables that Ms. Piazza has talked about. I look at what classroom materials are needed from the teachers, what supplies are we down on. Having moved in the last several years several times, uh, we have very, very little on any shelves. So we are at bare bones and filling up as we need. And we also buy as we go along. So we plan for what we have, but then try not to overdo, partly because you also don't want to have supplies sitting on shelves and then not being utilized in time of their own expiration date. And the last piece that I look at, um, well, with that previous piece, I also am looking at many reading materials and materials for higher level thinking. That's what many of your general supplies are, are going towards some of those areas as far as thinking skills and items that they can be working with. And supporting the teacher, you'll see some things in there for what is it that the teacher needs to be able to constantly excel, get better, and look at their own improvement to be able to better our students on a regular basis. So those three general areas are what's then spread out into these categories. So you're talking about $44,000. Yeah, one of the other things that came up in this was that in looking at that 90 page document that are, there are other accounts other than the principal accounts that are for that building and from pupil services comes accounts mm -hmm. medical guidance uh, those items that come across to those ESL and gifted yeah, ESL uh, in some cases gifted mm -hmm. and so those accounts do not show up on this building budget but do come out of the uh, pupil services budget and perhaps that would be a change that we could make for everybody to include those items but also the money that would be for those so you could it's been that it's been over absolutely yeah. yeah one of the things is that if they have any uh, students that are included in classrooms that are special needs students that they typically cover those costs with their building budget uh, and so uh, and buy those things from their building budget so yeah, questions here all uh, children are included Mm -hmm. Why is there such a big difference in the art as compared to the music and PE? Art, every supply for the art, every pencil, <coughs> art pencil, art material, their, the um, Crayola crayon, not Crayola crayons, but the, um, like the oil crayons, all their medium, all their pastels, all of their paper, their, their room is a consumable room, the art room. Whereas the, your music room, there are books that are bought on a rotating basis and therefore needs to be replaced only during either a curriculum review time period or if one is lost as Ms. Piazza had talked about and therefore it is only for the supplies such as those items that we talked about with the strings and the, or, or the music. That is the major difference. I, I know it's different from school to school that Okay. It, it may be, and also according to, <coughs> I just have a new, I have a new art teacher this particular year, so it's going to be a little different getting that organized and, and stated for that person's interest in what she's bringing in and, and the gifts that she's bringing to our students as compared to what somebody may have been the previous year and have stock up on different items. And again, they share among each other as well across the, the groups as far as the art teachers. Tracy, you did a she did. Job. She, she did, did a fantastic did. job, and well, we can. I have. I have, have, I have, have one question. Sure. Goes for general for all the elementary and actually all the schools. We have a 
we have postage in here, and I know we have our mm -hmm. our postage downstairs that we send out. Correct. What else would be covered with that postage that wouldn't come here for? Stamps on, on the day-to-day -day A postage, an item, um, everything from your niceties of thank yous to people who are sending you things or doing something to items that you're contacting parents, or, um, discipline items that you're sending home or announcements of uh, th that they've done so well with their attendance, things like that. Another big one is IEPs. If you're doing an IEP or certain things that have to go home to parents on a timely manner, um, if you have any questions, there are certain things, suspension letters, disciplinary letters, letters that have to go out within like a 24 hour time frame. So therefore, we might split the stamp on the building because to come through this office takes an additional day. But know that also the large bulk mailing, like our summer mailing. That all goes downtown. Even those process downstairs, it comes back out of our building budget. They tell us how much it is and then it comes out of that budget. Well, and, and see, that's my other question is, is that in here? Are we, yeah. Are we seeing that? Yes. Yes. Budget? Yes. 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 So yes. my yes. next question is like for the copy, our lease, mm -hmm. but I'm not really seeing that in here unless I'm not looking in the right place. So I'm curious to know as far as what the costs are for that. Paper and staples. There's two items and any overages. And, and in each building discussion that we had, we talked about having the Autotron on the Xerox machine. So the teachers, whoever's using the machine is limited to a certain number of items. Uh, we don't pay for cartridges a toner, those type of things, it's all included in the lease. So the only thing you would see would be paper, and that would be under general supplies general and supplies. staples. So, <coughs> so there's nothing other than the lease or overage. So it's paper, staples, and overage. Right. And, and typically the overages are taken out of that lease amount, which they do not budget for. And what, what number is that? This could do what? The 448 is, is the least. Technology? Yes, the least technology. 448. <laughs> supplies would be general supplies. The paper, the staples will come out of a 610, and that would be a typical, either partially perhaps a principal account for general mm -hmm. supplies and partially instructional or all instructional costs for supplies. Like I said, paper and staples. Staples are, and that's the only thing that's not covered. So this is coming out. I want to get this work. Is this coming out of lease technology, the general supplies, and it could also come out of <coughs> paper and staples come out of 610, which is general, general supplies. supplies. And the lease and the overages, if you're making more copies than it is in technology. the lease, that comes out of lease technology, correct? I'm sorry, I thought I heard you say something about the. I'm sorry, it could be here. curriculum or It could come out. Part of that could be allocated to principals, general supplies, or just instructional general supplies. Okay. I get, the reason I'm asking you, I guess my concern is we don't have a true feeling of what that's costing us, and if there's a way to go back to Xerox and maybe negotiate a better contract. You don't have an idea what's actually what's actually costing you. Well, because it's being taken out of different places, we don't know if it's the paper, the staples, the general supplies for the overage. I wouldn't know how much the overage was. Okay, I can get you those dollar amounts. So that's my question: is can we go back to Xerox and maybe get a better? Well, we would have to. The overages are based upon the the use of their use copies at the building. That's, that's and so, we, know because yeah. the paper we do know the that we buy the paper. Time. We're sent a bid supply sheet in um, maybe December it. that we have yeah. to order or estimate how many cases of white, how many hot pink, how many green, and then that is what um, comes to the business office and so they do a district order. But then each time we order that from our central warehouse, um, we, we do a requisition for that and then that is um, charged to our account. So we know how much we do, we do for paper or staples, but the overage would be a little bit more challenging. That would that would be. We, we can get a report of that for every machine as to what the what the a number of copies are being made on that. And we talked about that every each time I met with all of them. We talked about is like I said, is the Autotron on? Uh, are they limited to the a number of copies per month? 
Uh, are you looking at the request for printing and anything over 100 copies? Are you sending it down to central printing? And you know, we, we work with that every day and try and uh, be better about sure that. We're yeah. Mm -hmm. And we do Absolutely. work very hard yes. at making sure that our teachers do and ourselves all send things down to central duplicating because that and is when much. When is that lease up, Marie? Like Xerox lease. Each machine has a separate lease that if I think it's two it's years yet on that lease. What is it? Two, two, two years. Two years. <laughs> Judy. Yes. Either you don't need any more or you don't have as many students for the ESLs. That's why you're not. Any funds ESL is, is funded through the pupil services, so it's actually through a different. Uh, at one point, it was in our budgets, and then it it went into somebody else's budget. Now. Okay. So what that's year did that change? I'm just curious. Two years ago. I was gonna say a couple years ago. For the last two years, I haven't. The, had the reason why I ask, it's actually very interesting. This is not a question to you, but I was actually waiting to hear what some of the principals had to say because I sort of took the information from all of your spreadsheets and created my own to see how I could compare and what's interesting is that from last year um, the totals for all of the budgets together was about like 1.6 million dollars and a five percent decrease only would have been a decrease of about 80 percent um, eighty thousand dollars yet this year's budget is actually for the building budgets total it's uh, four and a half about four hundred and forty six thousand dollars less so it's not a 5% cut. So I, that's so it's interesting. So part of me wonders, OK, is it an enrollment question? And, and this is what I was sort of listening to, because I know we've redistricted. Right. But overall, the enrollment number should not have changed so substantially. So for me, originally, when I looked at the building budgets individually, some building budgets did exceed what was budgeted for. I noticed that you know, there was some furniture purchased in one building. Some came under. But overall, it doesn't look to me like you've taken a 5% decrease. It's actually like you've taken, I know my math skills tonight are pretty slow, a substantial, <laughs> how's that? instead of 80000 it's $446,000 across our buildings that were cut. And that's just the budgeted amount from last year's <coughs> budgeted amount. So when I look at that comparatively, and maybe I'm missing something, but I, I, I haven't seen that, so I. Well, no, this is yeah. actually just taking the numbers from all of these sections together and adding up the totals of what the totals were on yes. per pupil allocations. And, yeah. you know, and, and I'm surprised. So uh, you know, I'm just li listening to these here and, and, and looking then from this year to next. And we're at about the exact same number, actually, totally. It doesn't show 5% adding them up. It's actually remaining the same. And some of it's looking at, we were just talking about the fact of our two schools and how things changed when you went in and divided into seven elementary schools. And, and re-looking and how it was reallocated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't look like it was actually divvied up accordingly. And as I said, I've looked at what the current projection numbers are on enrollment and what uh, current and versus projected, and they're 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 different. So we have we have a a gap there. So mm -hmm. so it, it, it again it shows how prudent we are. Yes, exactly. It, I, I'm, that yeah. we are very prudent it, with it, our it, funds, it, and it, we do not. I, we don't go out and spend all of our money because it's June 30th and gee, we want to make sure that we get this taken care of. It rolls over into what we're doing for the following year or whatever else that we need. Sometimes we do wait into the spring to make some of our orders to make sure that we have the funding available or, or needs come up at different times during the year. So we all work on a time frame and not by up front hoping and wishing and being out of line with having things that we don't really need. So we are very prudent with all of our funding and hand back whatever ends up occurring. So sometimes at the back end, you actually do get 5% back. But at the front end, it's appreciated that the funds are there for us. <coughs> Anything else about March or elementary? Hi, Mike. Mike made nice. it in, so. <laughs> you came just in time. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. I apologize. I had a VM. That's, that's, don't apologize for doing your job, Mike. <laughs> thank you. Were you here when Tracy was speaking, Mike? No, he, he <laughs> you, you owe her a couple no, of coffee. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Uh, you want to come up to the podium? Sure. <laughs> How are you? Good. How was your night at the school? Thirty percent of my population came with parents. That's yeah. pretty good. Oh, that's pretty good. So we had a good night. We we're pirates tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going around going R. It's becoming ah. tired. Anyway, can I help you at all? 
Uh, let's see, I believe that's under tab 11. His budget is under tab 11. Actually, um, Mr. First could have stepped up to the podium if you would have been a little bit later because he was well prepared for that too. Yeah, so. but then I would deny Mike the opportunity to share his uh, hard, hard work and planning. Uh, Steve must want something. <laughs> uh -oh. Thank you. Can I help you with any questions that I wasn't here, so I don't know what they answered. But. Actually, Tracy did a fabulous yeah, job. Tracy, Tracy all got here. I know what it is. I understand it from her. They divided your budget amongst themselves. <laughs> I came from a Catholic uh, school, so I'm trying to squeeze a dime out of a nickel, too. I might catch them. No, <laughs> the main questions so far have been really procedural questions and uh, questions about field trips and uh, dues. Can I ask a question about dues? What do dues cover? Uh, my dues are, uh, I've only, in fact, I allocated short last year. Uh, we're entitled to one professional development uh, package, and I most of us do the secondary school principals and it's five hundred seventy five dollars so i put six hundred dollars in it was actually four seventy five last year on my budget and so i had to take from another one to do it uh, and in terms of field trip site I, I allocate very little it's just a small i think it's like five hundred dollars because uh, our pta is very generous and picks up all of our funding but in case it rolls over in the next year with a, you know something where i see something come up quick that I think I could use for the children. I, I want to have a little backup, but with that field trips, uh, our PTA is taking care of that, and the other one is just my one professional development package. Questions about the budget? Uh, do you have, do you have any questions about what might be in a particular line item? Do you have uh, questions about? I, I see in all of them the snack. Is that your PSSA? Yes. Uh, I have not allocated snacks the last better? two years, okay. so I don't have it. But it would have been it would have been PSSA. But I don't have that on mine. Okay. I just saw it and have a page in through, and I was just curious, guys. Yes. We all have travel. Anybody? Does anybody have any questions? They're all dressed up in the same. All basic. The numbers are a little different. That's right. All. Yeah. Just the, right. The numbers and we right. got a pretty good understanding from Tracy. Well, you know, Tracy, you did such a wonderful job. You've got these folks, you know, smiling. So I don't know what to say. Well, <laughs> Dr. Volcano, did you find? Are you sitting down? Yeah. I, uh, if there's anything that we're, we're, we're at, Mr. McCauley at Fox 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 School. Yeah. In case you want to catch up to where we are. Yeah, I just had one question about. I'm sure you did. Well, about the uh, book, consumable book that's uh, ten thousand dollars. Is that just one set of books, or? Uh, consumables come under two categories. Yeah. They come under our math consumables and our language arts. Okay. And those have to be redone every year. So it, it could be as high as $20,000, to be quite honest. Yes, but because of our June. grant funds, we've been able to cut that. However, I try to, I think this was just said by Judy. Yeah. I have money that's not been spent because I'm going to take that and buy next year's consumables while I still have the grant funds taking care of math or literacy, one or the other. Okay. That's the only reason that amount's there. And hopefully the grants continue in some form or we're going to be moving a lot of more yeah. columns around, unfortunately. Right. Okay. I have three big expenditures, my general fund, my consumables, and art. Yeah, and that's, you if that you too. noticed, I went from 17000 in general to twenty because I put an extra $1,500 in my art because I undercut myself this well, year. Yeah, and it's come out. you want yeah. twenty to seventeen. Right. So I cut back, but I put 1500 into my art account for next okay. year because I overdrew. Not, not that I, I did give money back, but mm -hmm. I, I balanced my budget. And they all are very good in uh, covering their overages, either on a monthly basis or a quarterly <coughs> basis or at the end of the year, they cover their overages by transferring from one account to the other. If, if, if no other board members have any kind of questions for our elementary people, how about we move to our middle school people? Is that all right? 
Yeah, I, I think we're going to find the same thing. Dr. Bob, yeah, that's not what I asked. Yeah, I'm sorry. So if that's the case, Charlene, I think you're up first. Yeah. Michael, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> okay, and that would be on the number... 18. 18, I think. 18. Am I correct, Marie? Yes. Uh, 18, yes. Or 19. 18, under tab 18. All right. Okay. Dr. Simbia. Yes. Show's yours. My budget is also reflective of the same philosophy that all of our principals have adopted in the fiscal, fiscally responsible or fiscally prudent approach to our. Uh, to our budgetary process in consideration of the climate, the economic climate, not only of our district, but of the entire country. My staff has also espoused that philosophy, and uh, my, my direction was uh, just to take absolutely bare bones, in fact, it's become the byword, bare bones, the budget, uh, what they needed to present an outstanding educational experience to students so that they could achieve, perform, and uh, develop. So. What they absolutely needed was all they took. So, and I think we've all done that. All the principals have done the same, have taken the same approach. And I, we, I really, our staffs really need to be complimented because they worked with us and it showed their resourcefulness and their creative creativity because they still pr provided a stellar educational experience with limited resources. Shirley, <coughs> under your dues and fees, you have dues and fees for social studies. <coughs> yes, that actually was a speaker. They had a speaker come in and they took it out of their budget, but we transferred mm -hmm. the funds. So that was where that thousand dollars came in. It was something that they've had every year, but initially was uh, funded by the PTA and then the PTA uh, was unable to fund it again. So this year we took it out of. Is that why you have four separate dues and fees? Um, I don't know why the other dues and fees, the, I don't have any money in those accounts. There's $1,000 and that's the one for the principals, but I don't use that. I pay for it out of uh, my own pocket. So I don't use that. The account that's up there that uh, is the dues and fees that I have the cursor on up there <coughs> is a, that's a general ed instructional account. Next one down here is 21, 121, and I don't know what 121 is, if I can remember anybody. Help me out, 121. Um, I'm looking here, 121. Music. music. Dues and fees for music. Thank you. Uh, and then that would be like PMEA. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That yep. would be PMEA and, and Song Fest. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, dues and fees at $1,000 for social studies, instruction, and then the last one is the principal's <coughs> dues and fees. So <coughs> those are the four different accounts. See that, but not all the other schools do that. Her dues is just for the principal. Yeah. Well, she doesn't have money in all of those, she just has uh, for social studies and then a general dues and fees for a thousand dollars. So she's not using all those accounts. And basically, what happens if we don't use those, which is the case, it goes back into the district fund. Got, yeah. uh, Dr. Simia, I assume that you're taking good books that you could save and sending them out to be bound. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, we salvage them as much as where it's possible. We salvage them okay. and we have them rebound. All right. And the same thing, uh, Dr. Roberts, with her stimulus funds, with all of us, with all of the principals, we were able to, she was able to uh, provide us with resources to receive the um, the consumables for social stu I'm sorry for language arts and for math so that saved us money but the money is in there this year I was able to purchase some coach books for the math program for PSSAs with the funds that are normally uh, directed to the purchase of consumable workbooks they are really inexpensive uh, property and Re renewing those every year and replacing those every year. Uh, we took the copyrights on some of them so that we were able to uh, have the children just, it was cheaper for us to duplicate some of them rather than replace them. So where we're, we're able to, we obtain the copyrights. Okay. I, I would say to you and to all of it, all the teachers across the district, um, 
you know, I think a, a wish list to the parents on the smaller items. You'd be surprised how many parents would give you 20, 25, 30, up to 50 dollars on, on smaller items. And uh, that's been done at some schools with great success. So we see community parent, PTA has been very generous subsidizing yeah. programs. Community partners, we partner with community right. members. Um, and they have been very generous to our programs. Right. Well, they, th there's people that won't join the PTA that would give you, don't give you money. And there's other people in that other group mm -hmm. that if they, uh, and then you have these people out here that need something to say, well, I'll donate specifically for that because I could afford and, $39. And Pat, you know, one thing that happens that maybe a lot of people don't remember, but, you know, every year we're asked to donate as parents tissues and paper yeah, toweling sure. and Lysol and disinfectant. Yes. I mean, you know, these are not products that the district is purchasing anymore. These right. are donated by families. I know, you know, I get a note home we're running low on tissues and I know then, you know, an abundance goes in with different kids and so it is happening. I mean, mm -hmm. our district is certainly yes. asking for and receiving donations from families for things in the classroom. Okay, uh, I'll let's see you guys any questions, I please. Do. Under I would like to get to the high school. At the middle school level, like five, six, seven, eight, what is the five ninety miscellaneous purchase as serve? Purchase services? services? Yeah. Like instructional instructional services. Five ninety. Five ninety. It's under five ninety services. Thirty five hundred. It's thirty five hundred and then in the seven eight building it's <coughs> ninety five hundred. <coughs> Well, we didn't get to her yet. Services. I know, but I'm just asking what <laughs> that is. Instructional services, but we have not utilized that. Okay. Uh, but it's there in case, the, in the happenstance that we would need okay. that, something would come up. But we have not utilized that. Okay. Is anybody? Many of our tutoring, like tutoring services, if we would have to, we, we partner with Lafayette College to bring in uh, mentors and tutors during throughout the day and after school. Yeah, and just to two notes under learn at, at social learn at social studies and learn supplies. Is that what that stands Learning for? Learning support. 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 Okay, I understand what you're doing. There's no problem. I'm familiar with those two. Guys, anybody got anything for? And your. Mm -hmm. One twenty. <coughs> if not. Angie, you. you can you. style your way up to the podium Thank with your earrings. You. And I want to say I did not recognize you at first with your new haircut. Thank you. Too. <laughs> Five, <laughs> uh, them brownie you points. Uh, <laughs> them, them, them brownie points are going to get you nowhere. <laughs> No, I think the secretaries around here know I point that out to them, too. <laughs> so, uh... Thank you. You're out of order, Dr. Mark. Tab 19 is, uh, the 7th and 8th grade. Yes. Miss, did you do your thing, please? I just wanted to let you know, I, I have Amy Braxmeyer, my assistant principal, with me. Um, we share the responsibility of the, the budget. Um, I do provide... Uh, give my assistant certain duties and she does oversee the building budget um, with me. Uh, she basically does the purchase orders and the requests, et cetera, but with my approval. So um, <coughs> some, I just wanted her up here in case you know she could answer some things more thoroughly than I could. In other words, she's covering your butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amy's actually the one who met with me yesterday. Okay. Because mm -hmm. Angie had a... My son. Had an incident, so I was That's at right. school yesterday. So Amy met with Mrs. Petrie yesterday. Questions, guys? I have a general question. I've seen through a couple of them. Is the student transportation in state? Student transportation, meaning with busing? Yeah, it's, we, I mean, there's nothing budgeted, but I'm curious to know in the past it, what, what it was. Is that's that nice. stuff that's being paid through the IU now, or is that right, stuff that's right. Yeah, I'm, the, the transportation only allows us to go so far with, you know, our drivers. So um, I don't think we do out of state. Is that correct, Marie? Mm -hmm. I think we have to then, yeah, we have to then um, contract busing out and actually pay for that. She may be able to answer that. 
That's what I'm wondering. Oh, sorry, you, special ed oh you're referring to special ed. Well, that's what I'm wondering, yeah. student transportation in state. So I'm wondering, so is that students so that, that we can transport to other schools, schools because of IU issues, and is that yes. not being yes. true? But that would not be in the building budget. That's that is not question. in my, yeah, good question. That is not in my but that, I guess my question is, was it previously, yeah. and it's now not? No, yeah. I think that should have been a transportation issue. Yeah. That's what I think it is. Did you, Andrew, did you what is this account 510 and 511? So I'm just curious to know. There's nothing now. Mm -hmm. I just want to know. Right. That She would have to answer that. Okay. That's correct. Because that doesn't Maria, come. If you can let me know then. Mm -hmm. Okay. That may be uh, field trips uh, or in-state in, in or the 95 miles. So I'll go back and confirm what that is. Then. The field trips looks like 519. Yeah, I see that, yes. Mm -hmm. I'll go back and find out what that is. And then there's also 512, which is out. Yes. Um, yeah, I have a question here. Uh, sure. Tech support general class, seven and eight, it's, it's up to 56,000. Actually, now, what, what actually is that? I, it's, it actually should be about 9,000 less. That, mm -hmm. That's a little bit budgeted over. It's And the reason the extra was put in there was due to the, the pupil population because of additional supplies, like the increase in paper, uh, general supplies that the students would need. That was where it was allocated. And again, it may not be used, so we would just go back to the district, but that's where we felt that the whole thing he needed. But that is being done in class. But that's in class by a special ed teacher? Bless you. No, no, no. no. These no. are general, general supplies. supplies. For the whole oh, paper, okay. pencils, Love support. Okay, supporters. under, okay. Yeah. Anything our students would need. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. Yes. That's okay. And that's always that's always falls a little extra. Correct. Yeah. Because you need to keep them busy and. <laughs> Angie, how about the travel yeah. for your seven eight? Not you. It has nothing under principal. Yeah. Um. I haven't taken money out. Well, what What's the one above it then? For forty seven fifty. It, it gets in again for if teachers needed. Um, it gets Correct. used by teachers, or it's more of a in case it's needed, or in case it's used, it's there. But again, the building doesn't use very much, so it usually just goes back to the district for conferences and travel expenses for our teachers. Um, they don't typically; they have not been going out to very many conferences due to the budgetary constraints. So that's what that's allotted for. Library uh, consumables, you have, uh, you went uh, <coughs> down to zero. What happened is it was just actually switched to a different code. Okay. It went from Correct. library consumables to um, down at the bottom, library books, books non-consumables. Non Do you it, see that for $7,600? Yes. It's in a different line item. That's where it should have that's, been. Yeah. Okay, that. and it is in there. Then. It is. Yeah. That's correct. It's seven. Because I, I know you have them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and your use in uh, uh, Doctor Simi is used is only twenty five cents apart per student, which is, which is excellent. It's, it shows you're both. Uh, and uh, we we do give a fair amount back at the end, like mm -hmm. in May when. Mrs. Goodry asks us, you know, to freeze the budget. We absolutely always, always have money to give back. And do you share any needed supplies if one needs something and the other? Um, or typically, it's we're, it's our curriculum is so different. It's okay. tough. Like elementary, they have the same math and science. Okay. It is a little bit more difficult than that. Okay. Than, than elementary, but um, yeah, we, we are very frugal, and uh, you know, we, we only spend what's absolutely necessary, and that we do give money back every year. And on your last page, you eliminated all those things. I just want that is actually from uh, that's from the district budget. Are you talking about like 
educational software, things yeah, like that. Yeah, and all the way down, you have nothing. Correct. To that, that does not come out, actually come out of my, my budget. Yeah. All the way up to educational software. Um, the large, the, well, the, she has not ordered the equipment, and actually that hasn't been utilized in two, three years. Okay. But you want them there just well, in case you need them. I, I don't. I don't have anything budgeted at this time because we haven't been using it. No, but I'm saying the yeah. counts are there. Oh, that's in case correct. You, yes. Because once you eliminate the counts, to bring correct. them back, it's almost yes, impossible. You can always transfer money, like Tracy had said. Right. That is correct. Anybody else? Do Do you get uh, one? Just quick question. Sure. You do. Uh, there, you cut out the library books. Uh, they're used in the library, but really not taken home or anything. Oh yeah, they are, but I don't think they cut the library books. No, it's it's it says there. library Where's books. Yeah. Which forty-two library yeah. books not consumable? The non-consumable, right? That's where, right. That's where, right. That's where she purchases her library books, seven thousand six hundred dollars. They're on the page before. Okay. And she has a book fair oh, every okay. year, and, and we. Um, we use that money to purchase more library books That's for the kids. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 I see it. Sure. I was going to say you have to be using something in the library. Oh, okay. If, if I'm you done. get a question, all right. I'm sorry, I'm high school done. folks, I forgot the EAA. And That's Alyssa's right. not going to cut me in half. Are we done? We're, we're good. I don't have any other we're questions. Good. I don't think anybody else does. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. I thought maybe if I stood up, I could. <laughs> Mike, you can stand up all you want. You ain't growing. EAA <laughs> <laughs> is on, under tab 17. I saw you try to be slick. <laughs> In front of you, you'll see uh, Eastern Area Academy's budget, which is much smaller than all of the rest that you've seen tonight just because of our um, the amount of pupils that we serve. At 135 pupils, our per pupil allocation leaves us with about $16,000 um, for the year. Uh, when you look at our line items, too, without some of the other programs that, that are in the other buildings, we don't have many line items. So uh, you're looking at postage, travel, supplies, um, <coughs> books, and then dues and fees. And those are really the only line items that we have within the academy. And I assume you do more postage than anybody, any, probably anybody else. Yes, we do. How many students do you have currently? Currently? Currently. I have to pull the numbers. Yeah. Something like that. Okay, I mean it's a lot lower. It's a, it's a fluctuating number, right? Because I'm just—I I mean, not to, not to put you on the spot. I'm mm -hmm. just—I'm surprised. I thought, oh, like I was looking at numbers and I pulled this up. It was like it's at, it was at 99. Okay, yeah, we transitioned so back in January. Um, at the midpoint of the year, we transitioned back students that have met the criteria in order to return. I can tell you today, I went through about uh, 12 referrals, so that number will go up within the okay. next two weeks. Gotcha. <coughs> Yeah, we have a very transient population, so our number is, is going to be fluid throughout the year. So we go with 135 because um, at our capacity is 150 to serve. So we feel that 135 is pretty average for what we can serve in a year. Yeah. You cut your supplies in a general uh, or supplies in half. Is that going to keep the students uh, uh, busy and, and working? Because that's one of the things at the academy. Yeah. They're not cut. It went from 10 to 12. No, okay. I'm looking at the main number two years ago. And 22. Yeah, and then it's down to... Uh, two, that, was, that was the year that we opened. Oh, okay. And so we, we needed a lot more at that, that time. Okay. Um, you don't last, have to go any Yeah, last year, if you look, we spent yeah. just about 3000 Yes. And we have been fortunate over the past few years to have a number of grants that also uh, help us uh, purchase those types of supplies. So we've had our 21st Century Community Learning Center. Those funds will dry up June 30th of this year. But we also have money, um, because we partner with communities and schools of the Lehigh Valley, uh, as a nonprofit, they're our, our community partner, we're able to leverage funds through them as well. So United Way funds, OJ, uh, OJJDP funds, those types of things that we're able to look at money coming in and in those uh, funding streams as well. Okay, and, and basically all through the elementary schools and the middle schools, you're really not buying hardly any equipment at all, if any. You know, so you're getting by with what you have and you're sharing, which is excellent. That's, you know, so 
So, you know, the travel stayed pretty steady the last and couple of years. Yes, that's good too. Yeah. But you're making quite a few trips out to the center of the state. How are you managing the state within that number? With the price of gas. That's, that's been the number. And I mean, and, and you, live with it, you just live and die with it one way or another. In the past two years, we've had two administrators to, uh, as well. That have that's been why I'm, I'm, I'm finding hard it, it so wasn't now. increased. Maybe I'm not always re asking for reimbursement, too. That's a I possibility. think you're probably not. <laughs> and I thank you for it. Anybody got any for her? I know, just, Alyssa, I'm just curious, and I, I was a little bit thrown off at the because I know there's a presentation about right, the alternative ed department. So I'm that's assuming saving Marie birth. told me I'd be doing that then in two in April. Okay. I, mm -hmm. I just wasn't sure if the numbers that are, because some of the, um, and that's where I was looking when you yep. started. So some of the account numbers that are there that represent different um, projects and uh, programs that you're using, like communities and schools, Correct. are those not included then in your? They are not considered part of the per pupil allocation. So they are not considered part of the building based budget. Those are contracted services. So they do not fall within the, the per pupil allocation. Okay, so is, those are things I, I guess I'll be addressing. I mean, I, I can okay. address those I, now. No, no, it's fine. I just want to make sure I understand, probably. So mm -hmm. the building based budget that you're talking about here is your 